Minneapolis. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, all right, all right, that's something. That's your baseline. That's where we started. That's where we started. I got to tell you something about this podcast, about myself in this room. This podcast had did two live shows performing for an audience of less than the people that were involved in the podcast. <laughs> then we turned it around. We did a show here last year, terrific. And in this room, I have performed in an audience of literally nobody. Literally nobody. And now I'm looking at these faces and I'm looking at these people and I'm knowing that people have driven from, from far and wide to come here. I am gonna make the following promise to you people right now. Your time here tonight is going to be very, very memorable. It really is. So uh, grab some beers and uh, sit down for some of the very, very, very worst readings. Uh, before we begin, uh, I want you to direct your attention over there to Mike or Miku. Mike. And uh, uh, Mike, Mike is recording this event, uh, so we have a video of this later. And that means one crucial thing. If you're the person that stands up with the, with the phone, videotaping the thing on your camera, you are officially the stupidest motherfucker in the room. All right, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna fuck around anymore because I need to bring one person up to the stage and his legend on the stage is suspect. He is on a watch list. His name is Frank West. Hello, hello. So to start us off, I thought I would read another story from the guy whose story I read last year. Unfortunately, my lawyer has advised me not to do so. Instead, I want to take you back to a magical time, a time full of hope. 2012, Hurricane Sandy has just hit New Jersey, and Governor Chris Christie is having a very bad day. <laughs> By anyone's standards anywhere, Chris Christie was having a terrible motherfucking week. Billions of dollars of damage, a few million people without power, dozens of people dead, and that little prick from Fox News, douchey by name and douchey by nature, asking when Romney would show up in New Jersey and what Sandy was going to do to his campaign. Like that was troubling Christie's mind at the time. He had about five hours sleep and zero changes of clothes over the past three days, and he'd bitten Ju Ducey's smug little head off. Everyone had just eaten it up. That asshole stick could come in useful. Cocksucker, Christie muttered now as he heaved himself out of the car, trying to get some of the profanity out of his system before he met the president. This guy might have been a boob and who was definitely a Democrat, but he'd been on the phone as soon as NOAA saw that huge fucker setting straight for the coast. Governor Christie, how are you preparing for the storm? I've signed the emergency declaration. You have my number now. Call me directly if you need anything. And then at landfall, he'd been there all through that horrible night. Governor, you're on the ground. How do things look? What federal resources do you need now? How do we get New Jersey back up and running, Chris? And FEMA had been there. You had to give credit where credit was due, and Obama had finally come through for Christie's state. And there he was, coming down the steps. And fuck me running, Christie thought. He dressed down, too. Didn't want to wear a suit and make me look like even more of a schlub. Like I haven't taken enough shit for this fucking fleece already. Obama took Christie's outstretched hand and clapped him on the back. His warm breath brushed Christie's ear. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. Christy felt as if he'd grabbed hold of one of the down power lines instead of the president's hand. His, his head spun. The hell? While under his, the blue face, his skin tingled and burned where the president had touched him. And Christy realized exactly where all the blood that had rushed away from his head was going. <laughs> He stumbled briefly before catching himself. The press had never made any secret of how much they coveted a shot of old Krispy Kremes falling on his ass. Not this time, guys, but fuck. Fuck. Obama had noticed and was steadying Christie with his hand. Must have been a rough few days. I don't envy you. The president's smile was gentle and sad. Understanding. 
That was pretty classy, Christy thought. Christy had a fair idea of what a presidential campaign was like. He'd done his homework back when everyone had money on Romney picking him or Rubio, and he knew that Obama wasn't exactly getting seven hours either. Yours can't have been better, said Christy, although you probably get showers and clean clothes at least, he indicated his fleet. Been wearing this a while then, Obama asked, reaching out a hand to touch it. As he stroked the fleece, Christy's heart started to pound. Oh shit, did Obama feel that? <laughs> and he gulped as color flooded into his face. Christy wasn't, he didn't, he'd never been into men. And if he'd been into men, he wouldn't be into soft, liberal, bookish, effete pussies like the man in front of him. The man who was smiling down at him and caressing his fucking back. And for a guy who wasn't into men, there was one hell of a situation in Christy's pants right now. <laughs> they walked to the helicopter. Christy voluble, talking 19 to the dozen about FEMA and the power situation. I would probably better just to buy up a lot of the ruined homes and take the opportunity to develop and invest rather than rebuild, and maybe the federal government could help out with some of that. And Obama nodding slowly and listening. Every so often, Obama's hand would brush his, and his skin would prickle and shit. He really needed sleep. <laughs> Marine One was plush by naval helicopter standards, but tiny by things meant to accommodate Chris Christie's standards. <laughs> Sitting down opposite Obama, their knees brushed together. That's a collector's item, folks. <laughs> Christie's dick twitched hopefully. <laughs> and he leaned forward and hoped to God the stupid fucking fleece covered it. But the flight over New Jersey drove all thoughts out of Christie's head, except for the wreckage of his beloved state. The damage on the ground was enough, of course, but every time he saw it from up here, it destroyed him all over again, no matter how many times he flew over it. The beaches all underwater, the boardwalk smashed and destroyed, thousands of trees gone, houses flooded, roofs roofless, still burning, ruined. The piers, the parked, the corner, the, sorry, the coaster in the water, and the sausage and peppers stand completely gone. Christie had always traded on his reputation as a blowhard asshole who didn't give two fucks about anything, but he'd grown up right here on the Jersey Shore and he loved his home. And look at it now. Christie's eyes filled with tears and he hurriedly wiped away with his hand. More tears came. Shit. He felt a touch on his knee. Obama was looking at him with those dark, kind eyes. We're gonna rebuild it, Chris. Fix it all. We have the money. We have the people. It's gonna be alright. New Jersey's tough. You're tough. Jersey's strong. Christy blinked away the tears. Every time I see it like that, I know, Chris, I know. Believe me, if Chicago got hit like that, I'd cry too. New Jersey's in your heart, Chris, your soul. And Obama gently brushed a tear from Christy's cheek with a finger and took both of Christy's hands in his own. Christy broke down entirely, sobbing his heart out for poor broken New Jersey and oh, the shame of it, crying like a baby in Marine Run in front of the fucking president who was always so calm and collected even when he clearly didn't have a clue about what he was doing who Christy had always thought he was an idiot, but who had been so together and resolved through all this fucking storm. The per fucking president, who was now kneeling on the floor of his personal helicopter, taking the distraught governor in his arms and holding him close as he wept, rocking him and rubbing his back in small circles. It's okay, Chris, came a deep murmur in his ear. Fuck me, so embarrassing, Chris whispered through his tears. Anyone here says anything, I'll have them killed, Obama whispered back. <laughs> and Chris, he managed a small, watery laugh. That's better, murmured Obama, and Christie felt the soft lips and tongue on his cheek, touching where his tears flowed, tasting them. Tasting me, Christie thought. And the realization that the president had in fact just kissed him sent a bolt of undeniable lust surging through his body. Christie pulled Obama in closer and nuzzled into his cheek, nipping the sensitive skin and feeling the president shiver. Easy man, muttered Obama, patting Christie on his thigh. Dangerous close to, dangerously close to things he should not be touching at all. <laughs> Press. Shit, Christie's voice was hoarse. Can we get some privacy later? Ten minutes. We have to make some calls anyway. I'll give strict orders not to be disturbed for any reason, provided you can keep your mouth shut. That's never been a specialty of mine. In times of crisis, we all discover our hidden strengths, Obama growled in his ear. <laughs> Scene change. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, Christy thought to himself as he squirmed and thrust into Obama's mouth. It's true! <laughs> Men really do know exactly what they're doing down there. And this one, at least, had very long fingers and an unbelievable tongue. 
Christy bit his lip to keep himself from groaning as stars flashed in front of his eyes and his orgasm slammed through him with a shudder that racked his entire body. The next thing he was conscious of was Obama shaking him awake, phone in hand. Come on, Governor, you got people to talk to. Christy rubbed his eyes. Shit, was I out for that long? Couple of minutes, Obama said, patting his shoulder. And you needed it. That sleep deprivation must be kicking in hard. Yeah, God, I must stink too. I swear I'm going to be buried in this fucking fleece. It kind of shoots you, though. It's a good fleece. (laughs) The last word in disaster fashion. I'd let you have it, but I still need something to wear, and there's no fucking way I can get into yours. Obama grinned and pulled the governor into a bear hug. Christy luxuriated for a moment in his president's warm, wiry embrace before feeling an insistent poke at his belly and realizing Obama was still hard for him. Should I, you know, do you now? No No time. Anyway, that's not how it works. Federal government sends aids to the states, not the other way around. I'm here to give you what you need. Like a punch in the gut, Christy suddenly remembered a whole lot of things that had not been uppermost in his mind. Ugh, listen, about that, you know I've still got to endorse Romney, right? They'll crucify me if I don't. Obama smiled and stroked Christie's cheek. It's fine. If you think right now I give a damn about presidential politics, then you don't know me. Christy beamed up at him. I knew you'd understand. This is about New Jersey, Chris. It's bigger than anyone's presidential politics. Although I want it to be on the record that it was you, not me, who brought the subject up. Obama kissed the tip of Christie's nose. Aww. Aww. What a great couple. I shouldn't hug you at the airport either, thinking about it, Christy said sadly. Nuh-uh. Handshakes, yes. Bro hugs, no. So I should give you this last one for the road before we get out of there. Christy knew they'd both get many more hugs that day, but he made this one count anyway. (laughs) Scene change. (laughs) Obama residence. How was it, honey? Terrible. Worse than you can imagine. But they're going to be okay. Whatever you think of Christy, he's been incredible on this. He thinks the same about you. If the boardwalks haven't been blown away, I'd I'd think he'd have taken you down there for sausage and peppers and, oh my God, Barack, you're blushing, you old dog. Really? Yep, seems like there's more than one reason why Bush called him big boy. You're sure you're not mad? Nuh-uh. Campaign trail rules, remember? Like Bill told Joe, it ain't really gay while Ohio's in play. USA! 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 Frank West! All right. You remember about, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago where I was like, you're going to remember this night? I'm not wrong, am I? 